up on the ledge before you, a lone lizard woman overlooks the marshes. Her stare is as sharp as the bolt I knew from atop her crossbow. Stand back and keep your hands off your weapons. Convince me you're no magister, or draw one last deep breath. She notices your collar, and you can see the tension ease out of her martial pose. No. No, I suppose you don't look like a magister. Those dogs don't niche their own. Except for Alexander himself, as it happens. I apologize for the steel-tipped welcome, but lives are at stake. Hold on, I'll let you up. With one graceful motion, the lizard throws down a tangled mess of vines for you to climb. Come, ascend to the Sanctuary of Amadia. You'll find you're not the only guest here, but the Great Mother provides for all. The Red Prince interrupts as you're about to speak. This woman is a dreamer. I can see the answers spinning in her eyes. Do rest your legs for a bit while I question her. You're too kind. Red Prince and the Dreamer exchange courteous pleasantries, as if they're finding themselves in a palace hall instead of a death-ridden swamp. She introduces herself as Bahala. To your surprise, they next lie down on the ground in a seemingly warm embrace and fall asleep. What follows, though, is far from peaceful. They claw and thrash as if struggling for dear life, caught in the hold of some hideous nightmare. Then they wake, haggard, Exhausted, they speak of a vision, Brahmos, and another red lizard. Ha, praise the daylight, I am now. There was death in that dream, chasing me like a hundred hungry lions. But at least I've new directions. When we escape and find ourselves on the mainland once more, I must search for Brahmos the Wanderer. Then I will finally know the truth, the very secret of my soul. You are fortunate to have found this place. The hollow marshes swallow life and regurgitate only the dead. My name is Bahara. Like you, I am a sorcerer. But unlike you, I am also a faithful servant of Amadia. Praise be her name and praise be her starlit eyes. Your chant has no meaning, for you know not of whom you speak. So let us sweep away such ill-starred ignorance, and allow me to enlighten you. Amadia is the Great Mother. She is the goddess in whose womb magic was conceived, from whose sacred body immortal wizards were born. Gratiana, her priestess in this sanctuary, is teaching me her ways. For several years now, I've been her disciple, but she has resided here for centuries, sustained by Amadia's love. I was like you once, a lost soul driven by instinct from the bowels of Fort Joy. There have been others. They tried to make it back to the mainland, but were never heard of again. I chose to stay. My home is here now. This is where I found solace, found sanctuary. I found the Great Mother and have been nurtured by her magic ever since. My knowledge is but a pond. Gratiana's is the sea. It is the sea you should speak to. The guests, they call themselves seekers. They're brave people and friends to sorcerers. But you'll find them a battered band here today. Brought low by bloody battle. Magisters, of course. Who else? The Seekers came here to rescue a sorcerer from the fort. They failed. Many fell. They've heard the Shrieker's shriek. 
I thank the goddess I'm not haunted by their sound. As you wish. A young man in oversized armor paces around a table covered with a spread of maps, his face a tight scowl of frustration. Every approach blocked. Oh, damn it. What good are battle tactics against those things anyway? He glances up. In quick succession, he becomes aware of both your presence and the fact that you're not a familiar face. Who the blazes are you? A sorcerer, indeed. I should have realized. A seeker can always recognize a sorcerer when they see one. Though, of course, your collar gives you away. The young man anxiously fidgets with his curved bow. You've found a matter close to his heart, evidently. That's, that's easier said than done, I'm afraid. Much easier said. Yet the Magisters have us cornered. They have these weapons called shriekers. If we try to go against them unprepared, we're dead. We've lost many already. They were sorcerers once, but after whatever perversions the Magister subjected them to, they're death incarnate. If they can see you, they can kill you instantly. After we retreated here, our leader, Sir Gareth, set out looking for some ancient weapons that could counter those things. Then we could break the Magister blockade and escape this island. But he hasn't returned. If Sir Gareth doesn't come back with those weapons in tow, well, this island will be our grave. You'll, you'll help us. His shoulders visibly relax, the weighty armor upon them settling with a clink. Thank you. Allies are in short supply in this place. If you help us, I promise, we'll get you as far away from this place as possible. A dwarf stands by a young woman. He seems intensely focused on her, whispering and singing softly in her ear. She Blood and bone, fire and smoke, death and, and worse. Hush now, Leia. They'll not hurt you again. You're safe now. Once Gareth gets back, we're going home. You'll see. It'll be fine. The woman rubs her neck, raking her nails across her skin as she whimpers. Before you stands a figure, her body wreathed in cloth. All you can see of her eyes are two dark holes in an ornate mask. Armadia's blessings, child. I have not seen this face in our sanctuary before. Pray, who are you? Bahara is an excellent student. She still has much to learn, but that is a truth for all creatures. Tell me, what do you wish to know about our goddess? She pauses for just a moment before answering. Time is a river, ever slipping by. It does no good to mourn what's gone before, only to appreciate where the current carries us. In this place I can worship the goddess Armadia and help those who come to me for aid. I live a good life. The person that I was is dead.
The woman freezes in place and starts to stutter. I... I... it was nothing. Simply a turn of phrase. Nothing more. Go in Armadia's grace, child. Hello again, child. What brings you here? Gareth. He set off to find the soul-forged weapons of Bracchus Rex. A brave mission, and a dangerous one. But I cannot stop you, if you wish to follow in his footsteps. North of here, you'll find the ruins of Bracchus's source armory. Nothing in this land can counter the Shrieker's power like those weapons. Without them, the Seekers are truly hopeless. Walk ever in Armadia's grace, child. Hello again, child. What brings you here? Go in our... Amidst the placid little pond, the face of a goddess lies half submerged in the water. Rivulets stream from her deep-set eyes like endless cascades of sunlit tears. You feel peaceful in her presence, soothed somehow by an intangible comfort. As you gaze upon her loving face, you find yourself drawn into a trance-like state. A voice seems to reach you from within your mind and from the furthest reaches of the stars. Its whispers caress you like a breeze. The voice grows stronger, like the breeze picking up. What were whispers become words. My children, my children. Gone are my children. Dead are they in the cradle I have brought. A feeling of indescribable sadness assails you. It feels like your heart merges with the spirits, torn together by a coil of thorns. My child, my child, weep with me for the mother who has lost. Weep with me and bathe in the tears of Amadia. Your tears mingle with those of the goddess down in the tranquil, crystalline pond. As suddenly as it came, the voice is gone, and you wake from its presence as if from dream-filled slumber. The pond now shines with an inner light, and standing in its waters, you feel rejuvenated, pure, as if born anew. Amadia's grace, blessings upon this day. The birds are asleep, the moon's in the sky. They said on what showed us, you're safe in bed. So close your sweet eyes and rest in the head. By Armadia's grace, what did you do? This is incredible. In all my years, I've never seen the goddess bestow her blessing on someone. I am humbled to be in your presence. Perhaps once, when the seven gods were still strong. But it has been many years since this was anything other than a pond for me to pray at. Armadia's strength waned when the divine Lucian accepted the power of the seven. This is most unusual. Truly we are blessed to know you. If Armadia favors you, that is all I need to know. Go in peace, brother. The seven more showed us the safe head.
The lizard holds a crimson-soaked rag against his side. He looks up as you approach, his expression oddly serene. <sighs> Magisters, they found our camp near the old harbor and unleashed hell upon us. <laughs> I'm lucky in a way. I was wounded by an arrow. It wasn't just sword and spear the Magisters used on us. No, they had these weapons. Living beings, depl- <sighs> That's Sir Gareth. You tried your best. I'm, I'm glad you're safe now. We aren't really safe here, are we? You're alive! Wasn't sure you would be. Samadel, this is the one I told you about. The disheveled lizard eyes you with hope, though her hope is tinged with mistrust. Han tells me you helped him out of Fort Joy. For that, you have my thanks. Can I ask if... Did you happen to meet a man named Gareth on your way here? Samadel. I know he will. He has to. He has to, indeed. We need our leader. And if he doesn't return with help soon, we haven't a hope. Have you... have you heard of Shriekers? Han looks down with a flinch. Samadel reaches out, grasping his hand. Her jaw tightens. Their weapons that can... can kill with a screech. The Magisters patchwork them from living sorcerers. Don't misunderstand me. We're not afraid to fight, but we are powerless against Treekers. The priestess at the shrine told Gareth some ancient secrets, some defenses that could be found in Bracus's armory. And he went there, in the hopes of finding it, whatever it is. You're kind to offer, but you'd best talk to Gareth's squire, Exeter. He'll know where your talents can be most used. Now, Han, let's take a look at your nasty leg injury. Catch you later, Skipper. It, it's good you're here. Focus on your breathing, Jules. Claude, 